Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so getting back into remastering our run on Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, I know we've taken a break for a while. Um, it's been a while since we since we kind of followed up on this. But again, we were basically waiting for, for the time being right when like Avengers Endgame was gonna come out to kind of segue into this, just to show you guys how great Avengers stories can really be in Marvel Comics. But again, there is a little bit of catching up to do, but the benefit of where we stopped in terms of the previous videos means that like we can kind of just, you know, segue directly into this and then just kind of catch up as we go through. Now, for those of you guys who are following my Marvel Major Avengers chronology playlist which is to say all the major events in marvel comics uh this will basically come before infinity and those of you guys who are following the events of just infinity war and cosmic marvel and leaving out all the other major events like the captain america run secret empire things like that this will still come before infinity but the store but the the playlist will still be shorter so again not a whole lot changing there uh, you'll find both those playlists down in the description by the way my editor gordon will, will link those down there but what this does is it basically picks up with shang chi and a girl named tamara now initially well and, and again we'll kind of get kind of get into this a little bit but with Shang Chi, he's really uh, he's he's super good when it comes to martial arts. But the benefit of Shang Chi is that he kind of ties into this idea of sort of finding your inner self, right? Like finding some kind of inner peace, right? Like he taught Spider Man his own martial arts style called the Way of the Spider, different things like that. Um, and so Shang Chi is kind of the guy that you go to when basically you you can't solve a problem on your own and you kind of have to meditate yourself through it. And that's one of the things that sort of goes on here is he's basically asking this woman Tamara like, who were you before all of this? And as Tamara kind of starts to try to recollect. On things, she's getting small little glimpses of her past. She's talking about things like, well, you know, I don't know how long it's been. I remember being in a hospital. You know, I remember seeing like a flash of light. And basically, Shang Chi says, like, you've been in the hospital for ten years. And that's when Tamara manifests back into Captain Universe. Now, this is where a bit of explanation comes in. So in Marvel Comics, you have the concept of Captain Universe, and so ultimately, Captain Universe basically gets his power from what's called the Enigma Force. And the Enigma Force is exactly what it sounds like. It's a force of energy that basically emanates from the microverse, but nobody knows anything about it. Nobody. Marvel's never bothered to really explain it at all. But a person who's bestowed by the powers of Captain Universe, basically it only really manifests in times of dire need, right? When there's like a universal threat of some kind. But the power of Captain Universe is relative and it can be extremely powerful or it can just be not that powerful, right? Like when Spider-Man had the power of Captain Universe, he punched the Incredible Hulk into the atmosphere. This version of Captain Universe is astronomically powerful. So again, it's really just kind of based on what version of, of the character that we're talking about here. But basically what Captain Universe says is the universe universe is dying, like the universe is coming to an end, and it manifested itself and bonded itself directly to that woman because one, it was a person who was available, and two, this woman's situation mirrored the nature of the universe itself, right? Like Captain Universe is a protector of the universe, the universe is broken and dying, this girl is broken and dying, therefore it makes sense for Captain Universe to bond itself to her. And so that's basically kind of how things segue into this. Now, from here we switch over to Tony Stark, and we basically have Captain Universe leaving Shang-Chi, going directly to Tony, and then speaking with Tony and Adam. Now, this kind of goes back to to the first story arc of the Avengers that we talked about, which was Avengers World. And what we found out, or at least what we saw, was that there was a guy named Ex Nihilo, and there was a woman named Abyss. And basically, Ex Nihilo is what was called a gardener. The idea is that the gardeners travel from world to world, and they essentially try to, like, perfect life on those worlds. If they cannot perfect life there, then the robot they travel with, which is called an Aleph, destroys the world. It'll just eliminate everything on the world and then destroy it. And so what happened is that in the first story arc, Ex Nihilo showed up on Mars, terraformed the planet, and then basically gave it an atmosphere and vegetation. And then after that, he targeted Earth. And what he tried to do, what he basically did is he shot an origin bomb at Earth, which essentially like jumpstarted the evolution of the planet. And so suddenly you had like all these crazy growths all over the world and different things like that. But the first humanoid to manifest itself as a result of the origin bomb and the, the super evolutionary process that was jumpstarted by Ex Nihilo was Adam. The issue was that Adam came out and basically just started speaking a language that nobody could understand. And so Tony Stark has been spending all his time here, at least a huge amount of his time, trying to decide for a language he's never heard of before. And then when Captain Universe shows up, she basically says, you've got it all wrong. Because Tony Stark's idea was that his name was Black Veil. That's like the only thing he could decipher was Black Veil. But when, when Captain Universe shows up, she's like, no, you have no idea what you're talking about. Basically, this guy's name is Night Mask. And essentially, like, what he's doing is speaking something called Builder Machine Code. And so what ends up happening is Captain Universe basically modifies the uh, speech patterns of, of Adam, giving him the ability to speak English. And he simply says, like, it's coming. And when the question's asked, what is it that's coming? You know, Night Mask says, like, 
like it's the white event, the last white event in existence. Now, this is when things get really, really cool is because what ends up happening is we switch over to something called the super flow. Now in Marvel Comics, what you have here, and, and it's really kind of strange the way it's depicted because it's been done different ways. So bear with me here. But in Marvel Comics, what you have is this multiverse, right? Like you got this huge multiversal space. And the way this works is that between the universes, you basically have like barriers. So think of them like an invisible wall, right? Like if you, if you were to look at the barrier of the universe, it would look like it just kind of extends on forever. But if you found a way to transcend that barrier and to walk through it, you would end up in a different universe. So it's kind of a invisible wall that can only be broken by certain people. And so with that in mind, in between these different universes, it's been done one of two ways. This is Jonathan Hickman basically changing everything that we know about Marvel Comics. Because prior to this, what you had was basically just the space between. That much like having insulation between the walls in your house, that where one room would be a universe and another room would be a universe, and the space in between the would, you know, would, would be the insulation, that's insulation housed a group called the Many Angled Ones, which is basically what Shumagorath is, if you guys know that. If you don't know what the Many Angled Ones are, they're just these giant, huge tentacle monsters that are absurdly powerful, but they're confined to the space between universes. What Jonathan Hickman is doing here is wiping all that away and basically saying none of that applies anymore. That instead, what you basically have is like a giant fish tank, more or less, and you've got all these different universes just kind of floating around in this giant tank that makes up the multiverse, and the space in between the universes is the super flow. And so basically the super flow is like this, this like these straight roads, right? Like 90 degree angles or I guess curvatures or something like that. But basically what it means is that like they're essentially like straight shots is basically all it is. But you can transition from one universe to the next by riding the super flow. And so what's happening is that out here in the super flow somewhere is essentially just like this giant device. And this device is literally being destroyed by whatever powers happen to be out there that are basically going through and like leading to the collapse of the multiverse. And so what we end up doing is picking up with like this one last, really like these two last guys that are there that are on this structure. And so it's kind of cool here because with the conversation between them, as they start to talk about this, they start to address this, what they basically say is like, there's this thing called the white event. And the way this white event works, and it's actually kind of cool, is it's not an original idea by Jonathan Hickman. Instead, the white event comes from New Universal, from, from a whole nother set of publications that were created by Marvel. But what essentially happened in this other publication that was created in this New Universal line of comics is you didn't really have superheroes per se. You didn't have Captain America, you didn't have Iron Man or anything like that. Instead, you would have this white event that would initiate and then like people would be bestowed with different abilities, but the, the abilities they had were relatives. Those of you guys who are watching Umbrella Academy, it would be like that. Basically in the sense that like different people would have different abilities, but they would come together as a singular unit and like save the world. And so what you ended up having was like a star brand, was basically one of the first beings to show up here. But what ends up going on in this instance is that because of the fact that like the, the space between them, the universes is collapsing due to the multiversal collapse, because it's all basically coming to an end, literally this, this singular being here designed to kind of monitor this installation where all these installations across all these other universes are basically coming to an end. He basically says just like fire, just fire off, fire a shot and just initiate the white event and see if we can, if we can jumpstart that. And that's exactly what happens. The white event is initiated. This massive beam of, a beam of energy is shot onto earth from this construct here. And like a person is chosen. And so now the question becomes, what is the white event? And that's when night mask begins to comment and basically say like the white event is essentially just like a dawning of a new age of superhero. And so basically like other individuals are going to be woken up. What night mask doesn't know is the, the white event did not go down the way it was supposed to. And so instead of there being all these other individuals beside himself, instead there will only be one that will be it. And so what this, what this essentially does is it creates a star brand. And so again, like when night mask goes through this, what he basically says is like, it's designed for the purpose of like selecting an individual of going through and like selecting a person who's best suited to contain that kind of power, a person who's the most capable. And so that's when we end up basically kind of transitioning to this college, this kid named Kevin, who's really kind of out there and not really being taken seriously by anybody. And basically like, he's the one that was ultimately chosen where Jonathan Hickman initially kind of went through and showed us like, you know, some people who were jerks or like jocks and different things like that. People who were really seem more traditional roles of masculine, as opposed to like traditional roles of non-masculine that basically that's what was supposed to have happened. That any one of these guys here, this jock or, or any one of these guys, the, the, the super intelligent guy, they were all supposed to be like, they were the ones who were supposed to have been chosen, but it was firing off a shot at the last minute in an act of desperation. The choice wasn't made effectively. Everything was falling apart. It's a failure of the system. The wrong person was chosen that this kid, Kevin was basically picked. And when he was hit with the power of the star brand, he didn't know how to control it. And in the process wiped out everything around him, literally unleashed this massive scale of energy and obliterated everything around him. Now this is cool because what Hickman does is he starts going in and saying, now let me show you the power of the star brand. <laughs> and this is where things get kind of hairy. We're going to kind of jump ahead a little bit, not really jump ahead, but kind of explain ahead a little bit. When the star brand faces off against the incredible Hulk, the incredible Hulk is immediately sent flying into the atmosphere. 
atmosphere. Like, literally, the Incredible Hulk has no real chance here. Hyperion shows up, Hyperion's the next one to be taken out. Everyone who faces off against Starbrand ends up getting wrecked, and no one can really hold off against the power this kid possesses. And the reason why is because at the outset, this is all uncontrollable. Kevin doesn't know, doesn't really know how to control this power he possesses or what he's able to do. But the caveat to the star brand is that the power is, is by definition outside of, of Kevin's control. He can harness it, but he can never control how much power he has at any point in time. The way this works is the star brand as a protector of a, of a singular system, as a protector of an earth, is designed to basically have however much power he needs to defeat whatever enemy he's facing. That's a challenge to the earth. If Galactus shows up to earth, star brand could defeat Galactus. The kicker here is that if he doesn't know how to use it properly, then he can still be killed. So it's not like a, it's not a one-stop shop, right? Like it's not an end-all answer. Just because he has access to all this power doesn't mean he knows how to use all that power. So again, a guy with the ability to manipulate reality, if he doesn't know how to manipulate anything, can't do anything with it. It's useless, you know? So it's like having a million dollars in a bank account that you cannot access. And so it's kind of cool because basically like Nightmask literally like takes Starbrand and whisks him away and says like, it's important that you understand what you're role in this world is and it's kind of a cool thing because when this happens he kind of takes them on a tour basically shows hey look this is where you got your power from from what's now a collapsed system the space between universes is essentially collapsing now there's really nothing keeping universes from crashing into each other which we've known all along by the nature of the incursions but again like going through and, and showing these extreme displays of power going through and, and, and showing like these extreme abilities is pretty cool because it means that like for the most part Starbrand is not easily defeatable when the Avengers catch back up to him again and you've got Carol Danvers Captain Marvel you You've got Hyperion, you've got Thor, you've got Captain America, you've got the Incredible Hulk. You have all these guys facing off against him. None of them are able to defeat him. Basically, his power is extreme, seemingly unrivaled, and no one can really, no one, no one has a chance against this kid. And so because of that, because his power is kind of running unchecked, the Avengers do the only thing they can do. They basically say, hey, look, we've got to keep the both of you in, a, in like a safer place. We've got to keep the both of you in a place where we're like, you guys can't harm anyone. And so what they do, and, and really kind of like Kevin and I Mask actually go along with it, but what they do is they throw them inside of a Dyson sphere, literally like put them inside of the cell out in the middle of space and then basically leave them there until such a time as one, like the threat of the incursions can be dealt with, or two, the Avengers can figure out how to deal with their powers and their extreme abilities. But again, you know, just kind of continuing on to Hickman's, you know, Avengers and New Avengers, remastering the whole thing. And, uh, yeah. So with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.